is Nightline. Tonight, on a special edition of Nightline. The great Ephraim Taylor. Stolen Faith, the hunt for Ephraim Taylor. Oh, you broke! You can't make no money! Gross it up! The preacher's son hailed as a financial wizard for parishioners at America's top megachurch. Somebody raise their hand and give God a praise if you want to get paid this morning. He promised believers he could make them rich. He sounded like a godly person to you. He's quoted scriptures. They gave him millions, so where'd all the money go? Tonight, How's it going? busted, with investors across America demanding their money back. That was where the kiosk came out of. Taylor and his wife Play that song. turned their back. You guys running from everybody? Until now. The families feel that you've cheated them. We track them down for an investigation nearly two years in the making. There's a lot of people trying to reach you. Good evening. Just hours ago, a dramatic culmination to a saga that mixes faith and finances, piety, and prosperity. It centers on a man named Ephraim Taylor, the son of a pastor who told parishioners at some of America's most prominent megachurches that he could make them rich and please God in the process. They believed and they gave him millions. And late today, two years after Nightline started investigating an arrest. Here's ABC's Steve Osasami. The pastor was Eddie Long. Good morning. At the time, one of the most powerful black preachers in America. Your life is about to change. Six years ago, he introduced his mega church to this man. Put your hands together and receive my friend, my brother, the great Ephraim Taylor. And lives did change. Ephraim Taylor was a self-proclaimed millionaire only in his 20s and a preacher's son who spoke the language of the church. To these families, he was a financial whiz kid. We're going to show you how to get wealth and use it for the building of his kingdom. It was all part of what he called his wealth tour, sermons about self-improvement and financial pitches later in private. Security officials now say these families were victims of a Ponzi scheme that reached into churches across the country, from Eddie Long's in Atlanta to Joel Olstein's in Houston. Officials say he owes millions to investors in several states. He preached self-improvement and shared stories of his success as a young black man on shows like Montel Williams. So I went on to high school, ended up creating my own internet company, raised three quarters of a million dollars in high school. <laughs> Even here on ABC. So where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years from now. Probably a minister at somebody's congregation. And when he spoke to churchgoers, his words resonated. You are here in God's house on this morning. He sounded like a godly person to you. He did. I mean, he, he's quoted scriptures. Lillian Wells says she met privately with Taylor after hearing him speak at church that morning in Atlanta. She says Taylor sold her on his socially conscious investment that she'd be giving back to her community. And I was promised to get a 20% return on my money. So in December of 2009, she gave Taylor $122,000, everything she had, out of her retirement account. She told us he gave her these papers. He claimed they showed he invested her money in a real estate venture that turned around homes in inner cities. But then, she says, he disappeared. I couldn't get a hold of anybody, so then I started calling the 800 numbers. You know, so I just can't get them. This is your retirement. Yes. And it's gone. Yes. Yes. It's gone. Bad, isn't it? <laughs> You're blessed, prosperous, victorious. In Houston, Texas, at the megachurch of Pastor Joel Olstein, oh the flock was introduced to Taylor when, according to the church, he was invited to speak to a small classroom group about biblical financial principles. That was where the kiosk came out of. Gary and Anita Dorio were there and later invested $1.3 million, their life savings and her mother's retirement. The Dorios thought they were investing in an inner city laundromat, a juice bar, and a gas station. Were you spending money on things that existed or that were imaginary? Some existed and some didn't. Attorney Kathy Lerman says hundreds of investors have told her the same story. I cannot tell you how many people have said to me, I thought I was the only one. One thing Taylor was apparently investing in was his wife Michelle's music career. In 2009, on this sneak peek of her album, Taylor credits himself as executive producer and hot male model. 
We tell him to stick to his day job, but we're not sure what that is. Maybe you know this one. I'm sexy, I'm perfection, I'm that hotness, pay attention. The government said Taylor paid for the studio time for his wife's music career with the money that came pouring in. And there he is again, making a cameo. All together now. I move like a billionaire, and I don't care, and I don't care, and I don't care. Want more? The complete version is available on iTunes. In August of 2011, we started looking for Taylor, first at the headquarters he'd listed for his businesses. The address led to a post office box inside this mail store. He's a thief. Lisa Conway worked for Taylor in 2010. She sold yet another investment his company was pitching. I would see things that weren't appropriate. Like? I had caught them trying to manipulate paperwork. It sounds like you don't believe any of this stuff existed because I know so much. We had folks that came. Soon, she says panicked families were banging down the doors of this office where she and Taylor worked. There's gotta be fear on his part that this is all coming down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. You could see him sweat. How many of you wanna get paid this morning? Somebody raise their hand, give God a praise if you wanna get paid this morning. Hey, Mr. Taylor, over here, Lillian Wells would like to get paid. But she says that even after asking the church for help, she's left with nothing. What's the first thing the bishop said to you all? <laughs> well, he came in and he said, basically, church ain't got no money. Lillian no longer attends Bishop Long's church, and she says she was forced to file bankruptcy in September of 2012. My name is Ephraim Taylor. I'll see you guys the rest of this weekend. Her minister, Eddie Long, claimed that he and his church did nothing wrong. Come on, in 2011, Long released this video pleading with Taylor to return the money. Please do what's right. Can't do something! You broke it up! Even people who've known Taylor since the days back when he was just starting out say they don't know where he or most of the money has gone. We were young, ambitious guys, and I liked that about him. Christopher he says he met Taylor when they were both 19 and they briefly man. sold vending machines he together. Nice. He claims he even invested $26,000 of his own money with Taylor. But what bothers Christopher most is he convinced his own father to give Taylor 75000 he says neither of them got more than a fraction back. It cost me a big lesson, but I'm not gonna get it back. And smashing his face really isn't gonna help me. In May of 2012, we heard from an attorney representing Taylor who said Taylor is not in hiding, but has stayed out of the spotlight because of concerns for his safety. And he said Taylor unequivocally denies that he looted investor proceeds to fund an extravagant lifestyle. And then 15 months after we first reported the story, go, 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 go. Nightline got a tip. Someone had located Ephraim Taylor and his wife. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. So we went on the hunt. Go, 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 go. When we come back, We're back with a special edition of Nightline. Ephraim Taylor was the son of a preacher who told believers he could revolutionize their finances. But then it all went very wrong. So what would he say when Nightline caught up with him and his wife? Here's ABC's Steve Osasami once again. There was this Ephraim Taylor, the hype man in the music video, celebrating the high life and starring his wife. I do what I want and I call the shots. I move like a billionaire. And then there was this Ephraim Taylor. And somebody tell you, oh, you broke, you can't make no money, cross it up. Who preached faith-based investing in churches across the country. You want to get paid this morning. Somebody raise their hand, give God a praise if you want to get paid this morning. And who was charged by the SEC with running what they call a Ponzi scheme, saying he preyed on those churchgoers who gave him their trust in over $11 million. Suddenly around then, they took the whole website down. Back then, the SEC told us they couldn't find him. His attorney told us he was just staying out of the spotlight. Hmm. Well, we got a curious tip. If we really wanted to talk to the Taylors, we might want to look in Lenexa, Kansas, specifically at a shop called Panacea Massage. 
There was always a lot of comment about her past having had lots of money. Finally, Michelle Liz. Two years ago in the fall, a massage therapist rented a room. She went by the name Liz Taylor. No, not that Liz Taylor, though she did seem to share the late actress's love of bling. And she would also make comments about maybe how my purse was cheap and she was used to the Gucci purse. I get the impression that she was very disappointed with her current lifestyle and very depressed about it. She says Liz's husband, who came to work with her almost daily, also talked about his previous career and lost fortune. He's lost some weight and he's rocking new hair, but you guessed it, her husband is Ephraim Taylor. Well, he's really smart, this is her quoting her, and um, he's really into investments and, and he uh, is a consultant. And I said, so what happened to all the money? Well, you know, the market went in a slump and we just, you know, couldn't, you know, the same old answer to every question where everybody has the money and then doesn't. They like to whisper all the time, mm -hmm. even if you're standing mm -hmm. right next to and them. no eye contact. They whisper in each other's ears. They can't look you in the eye. They don't acknowledge you're standing in the room with them. One day, Anna says Ephraim was sitting at the front desk and she says he seemed nervous. He was just sitting at the desk on the computer. I don't know what he was mm -hmm. doing, but he was just sitting there and I went to grab um, a piece of scratch paper and he backed up so far away from me, so hard that he hit the desk. When Pam decided to install security cameras to protect salon workers, she says Ephraim took note. Um, <laughs> one of the comments that I was told he, he said to one of the other therapists here was, hey, look, they have cameras. Be careful what you say, because there's audio and there's night vision. Then it was like, well, what's going on? And this was when the salon ladies turned into amateur sleuths. She had me walk down the hallway, look at Liz's license, because we call her Liz. And I said, actually, her license is Michelle. Wait, wait, Michelle Taylor, the recording artist? We spelled it completely out, she Googled it, and then the whole can of worms opened up at that point. They even found our ABC News Nightline story, which they viewed online. And then it ended up being the whole multi-million dollar scam thing that all surfaced on the internet. That's how it all came together. So it was all within a matter of, you know, 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> and then it all just went, ah! I was like, oh my God. I mean, we had no idea. Apparently, while all those investors wondered where he was, Ephraim Taylor was spending his days in a suburban day spa. The salon ladies made the connection. They contacted one of our sources who called Nightline. A lot of people may have said, you know what, let's just wash our hands of these people, let them go. Oh, absolutely not. If you're so quick to take someone's money, and just leave them high and dry, you're capable of anything. Our source told Nightline about the Taylor's activity in Kansas, and sure enough, we caught up with them at an apartment complex. I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Go, 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 go. How's it going? What do you say to all those families who say that you cheated them? Uh, Give any answer? You? Those families who say that you took their money, sir? Anything to say to all of those families? What about the money that the courts are ordering you to pay those families? Do you plan to pay them back? There's a lot of people who are hoping to hear from you. Do you have any response? Anything for those people? There's a lot of people trying to reach you. An hour later, as if nothing happened, Taylor's wife shows up for work. So is your husband here? I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. You guys running from everybody? What do you say to the court? And all of that money that the court is asking you guys to pay back? The families feel that you've cheated them. Is, is that, is that right? Do you have anything to say to those people who say that they think that you've taken money from them? Do you have anything to say to those families at all? Her reaction was one of the strangest we'd ever seen. Like she was walking the runway at a surreal fashion show. Do you have anything to say at all? Do you and your husband plan to go somewhere else after this? Not a word. That is until today. When we come back, what happened just hours ago that has some of Taylor's investors jumping up and down.
They are joyful. They are grateful. Some of them still just can't believe it happened. more of our special edition of Nightline after allegedly losing their money and their faith. The investors who say Ephraim Taylor cheated them out of millions are jumping for joy tonight. Here again, ABC's Steve Ozenson. What do you say to all those families who say that you cheated them? It's been nearly a year since we last saw Ephraim Taylor refusing to talk to ABC News about accusations that he swindled his brothers and sisters of the church out of millions. We want to get paid this morning. Somebody raise their hand, give God a praise if you want to get paid this morning. But today, the prayers of his clients were finally answered, as only hours ago, he turned himself into authorities on various counts of fraud charges that only cover a fraction of what the SEC and other government agencies claim that he has swindled from investors. Taylor's lawyer had this to say about his client's arrest today. Mr. Taylor voluntarily surrendered to law enforcement immediately upon learning of the indictment, and he is anxious to address the pending charges. Kathy Lerman, an attorney representing some of the alleged victims, was overjoyed by Taylor's arrest, and that's putting it mildly. Other than the birth of my two children, this is one of the happiest days of my life. Uh, this day means a lot to me. It means even more to my clients who are the victims and it is the answer to prayers by all of us that justice be done. New Birth, one of the many churches associated with Taylor, told ABC News in a statement today, it has always been our prayer for a resolution to this matter in which many lost their investments. Our hearts go out to anyone who suffered losses and we pray for healing. Taylor's attorney told ABC News that Mr. Taylor was released tonight on his own recognizance. Ms. Lerman wishes that weren't so. I absolutely believe he's a flight risk. I don't believe Ephraim Taylor ever intends to answer to anyone for any of the evil that he has done, if he can get away with it. But tonight, his alleged victims are taking solace in the hope that he will soon be answering to a higher power. You are here in God's house on this morning. For Nightline, I'm Steve Osinsami in Atlanta. An extraordinary story reaching a climax of sorts tonight. And our thanks to Steve Osinsami for his reporting over the past two years. We want to thank you as well for watching ABC News tonight. World News Now is coming up soon with your overnight breaking news. Tune into GMA first thing in the morning. And as always, we're online 24-7 at abcnews.com. Thanks again for watching. Good night.